Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Ambition. I'm your host, Gabby Remo, and thanks for joining me for this week's episode of Foresight 2020. On the date that I'm filming this, October 8, 2020, we are a mere 25 days away from the election. From when you're watching it, it'll probably be around 20-ish days. 20-ish days closer to inevitable doom. So please, if you are watching this and you are able to vote, register and do it on November 3rd. Vote, 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 vote. Girl, please, please vote. So for this week's episode, me and you are going to discuss the Supreme Court. Yes, me and you. I feel like we've built something so special over the past two episodes. Let's get into it. The Supreme Court serves as the highest judicial body of the United States. The court is made up of a primary chief justice with eight seats for associate justices. These justices also take a non-alcoholic shot every single time I say justice in this episode, are nominated by the president and are confirmed through a majority vote casted by the Senate. Now, unlike the president, who serves four consecutive years before possible re-election, the justices are appointed on the basis of a life tenure. That means their position is only terminated through their death, retirement, or in conviction on impeachment. As for the court itself, they hold a whole lot of power in the judicial system. The Supreme Court is primarily a court of appeals. They have the power to overrule decisions made in lower appellate courts. But the court's best known power is judicial review. It's the ability of the court to declare a legislative or executive act in violation of the Constitution in terms that aren't specifically outlined within the Constitution's text. It's safe and definitely PC to say that the Supreme Court is quite powerful. To reaffirm that, when the court rules on a constitutional issue, that decision is virtually final. Rarely these decisions are altered by procedure of constitutional amendment. The process for amendment can be found in Article 5 of the US Constitution. And in less rare circumstances, decisions can be altered through new rulings in the court. Some landmark decisions include Obergefell v. Hodges in 2015, where the Supreme Court ruled 5-4 that the Constitution guarantees a right to same-sex marriage, legalizing the right to marry whomever you want in all 50 states. Or in the case of Miranda v. Arizona in 1966, with the you have the right to remain silent ruling, protecting citizens with their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination making the Miranda rights a standard feature in arrest procedures. Or in United States v. Nixon in 1974, a complete sweep with an 8 and 0 decision that the president cannot use executive privilege to withhold evidence from a criminal trial. All of these were pivotal decisions in our justice system. Many decisions deeply affect the lives of the American people. And now, more than ever, there's extreme polarization in our politics which is why it is so important that the Supreme Court has a balance of ideological leaning. Objectively, the Supreme Court right now has a Republican-leaning majority. Prior to the passing of Justice Ginsburg, there were five Republican-leaning justices and four Democratic-leaning justices, and now it's down to three. So the imbalance of ideological leaning will be greater. On politically controversial issues, the court majority, in this case conservative, are able to impose its preferences onto the entire country, thus leaving the losing side, which represents often half or more of the country, voiceless in shaping policy. Now, this isn't to say that a left or right-leaning judge can't rule in the other direction, but their preferences still matter and are often apparent in their rulings. And presidents, of course, nominate justices that most align with their agendas and political party. President Trump has been able to nominate and appoint two seated justices, Justice Kavanaugh and Justice Gorsuch. And now, because of the passing of Justice Ginsburg, he has nominated Amy Coney Barrett. Admittedly, she has an impressive resume as an attorney, jurist, and professor. 
Attorney Barrett clerked for multiple circuit judges till finally clerking for the late Justice Scalia before joining the faculty of Notre Dame Law School. There she taught for 15 years and she was also an attorney for many firms and different expertise areas. Trump nominated her to the appellate court in 2017 where she's been serving as a circuit judge. And so now with an objectively impressive track record, why is there so much controversy surrounding her spot? As mentioned before, Justice Ginsburg was considered to be a trailblazer in gender equality and women's rights. RBG won a whopping five cases before the Supreme Court, and each one advanced the constitutional protection of equal rights for all Americans. Some of these include employers not being able to discriminate against employees based on gender and reproductive choices, like Title VII, the Pregnancy Discrimination Act, or the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, which allows women to apply for bank accounts, credit cards, and mortgages without a male co-signer. RBG also wrote the historic decision ruling that state-funded schools must admit women. And aside from this, Justice Ginsburg has been an advocate for pro-choice policy. From her confirmation into the Supreme Court, she has been set in her belief that women should have the right to their physical autonomy. And so, although Judge Amy Coney Barrett is a woman, her track record shows a harsher legal interpretation of a number of issues, not just those dealing with gender equality. Some of Judge Barrett's most controversial court cases include the decisions like, should the court halt the deportation of an immigrant who faced torture at home? Judge Barrett ruled no. Or in decisions like, should they shield prisoners from unjustified violence by corrections officers? Judge Barrett said no. Or, more in contrast with Justice Ginsburg, should women be permitted to obtain an abortion upon discovering a severe fetal abnormality? Uh, audience? Yes. Judge Barrett said no. On the same note in 2017, during her nomination for the US Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, Judge Barrett answered some questions from Senator Whitehouse. They recounted a time where she had written that abortion is always immoral. And in fairness, during this questioning, she stated, my views on this or any other in question will have no bearing on the discharge of my duties as a judge. But that is up to your discretion as to whether you see that reflected in her previous rulings. So with Judge Barrett's rulings and political leanings into consideration, some people feel as though replacing Justice Ginsburg with Judge Barrett is a threat to the strides Justice Ginsburg has taken. They do appear to be polar opposites. And at just 48 years old, Amy Coney Barrett has the opportunity to hold that Supreme Court seat for multiple decades. And with a possible re-election of President Donald Trump for a second term, in the following four years, he could nominate even more conservative leading judges, tying back to that lack of balance in the Supreme Court. The filling of the Supreme Court seats could be detrimental to the more liberal of issues. There's talk about overturning Roe v. Wade, which could trickle into more issues alike to be at stake. There's also controversy about Judge Barrett's nomination, as many Democrats are saying that it is wrong for a president to fill the new open seat during an election year. Former Vice President Joe Biden stated during a speech on September 27th, never before in our nation's history has a Supreme Court justice been nominated and installed while a presidential election is already underway. It defies every president every expectation of the nation where the people, the people, are sovereign and the rule of law reigns. But unfortunately, that's untrue. According to the Supreme Court, White House, and Senate records, since the 1900s, five justices were nominated and installed in an election year by four different presidents running for re-election. Two of which, Herbert Hoover and William Taft, lost in their elections. On its own, an election year is not a historical rule in order to hold a seat open, nor is it far-fetched as it's happened. The crucial next step now is Judge Barrett's confirmation into the seat. 
which could be blocked by a number of reasons that trickle down from one another. One major reason being the COVID-19 crisis. It has infiltrated the Senate as multiple Republican senators have tested positive. Two senators in which, Senator Lee and Senator Tillis, are also members of the Judiciary Committee. That means their vote is not only needed to confirm Barrett on the Senate floor, but also to pass her nomination out of the committee. If neither has recovered by the time the Senate returns on October 19, the committee could possibly be deadlocked with 10 Democrats and 10 Republicans. But in line with the Senate Judiciary Committee rules, the two senators can call into the session to vote, or they can send over their vote in writing. A simple, yeah dog, should suffice. Now, there are also some strategies to bar the confirmation that Democratic leaders have been exploring, many of which would be such a mouthful and I feel as though I have talked your ear off enough today. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be a history teacher today, but it is what it is. It's what we've come down to. I'm deciding on whether to buy a tie with Mount Rushmore on it or one that has the constitution. Let me know in the comment section down below. But really, what do you think? Do you think it's wrong for a president to fill a Supreme Court seat amidst an election? Or do you think replacing the late Justice Ginsburg with Judge Barrett is a hit toward RBG's legacy? Let me know in the comments section down below or just shoot me a strongly worded email. Either way, I might cry. Until next week, thank you for watching this week's episode of Foresight 2020. Remember to be kind in all that you do and to have conviction in all that you believe in. Bye for now.